Lightroom offers an amazing tool that I'm sure most of you are not using often enough, but this tool can unlock so many more colors in your images and really bring them to life if you know how to use it correctly. And in this video, you're going to learn the actual functionality of this tool. I'll show you how it can add vibrance and saturation to dull photos. We'll do some really interesting coloring and remove color chaos to create more aesthetic images. All of this with only one tool. And no, it's not the HSL tool and it's not the color grading tool. It's one of the most misunderstood and underused tools inside of Lightroom and it hides all the way at the bottom of the adjustments panel. It's the calibration tool. And if you want to understand the calibration tool and really use it to its full potential, we need to first talk a little bit about color science. So as we might know, every photo is made up of a bunch of pixels and every pixel has a mixture of red, green, and blue. That means that, for example, a pixel that has a certain shade of blue is made up of a certain mixture of red, green, and blue. So if you have a look at this color wheel and at the histogram, you can tell that every color has a certain combination of red, green, and blue. So this green, for example, has 63% red, 94% green, and 37% blue. And this red, for example, has 75% red, 34% green, and 13% blue. Try to remember that because later on it will be important when I show you some real photo examples. But first, another interesting thing to know is that every camera manufacturer actually has a different color science or a different interpretation of color. Canon might, for example, put more saturation in its red pixels in comparison to Nikon. Or Sony might use a specific combination of red, green, and blue in their colors to create a specific look and feel that determine their Sony colors. To make it more clear, Canon might say that this is blue, whereas Sony might say that this is blue. And in fact, you can tell that both of these colors are blue. They're just a different interpretation of blue. So each of these blues has a different mixture of red, green, and blue. So Lightroom's calibration tool is designed so that we can change those values. So we can change that mixture of red, green, and blue in every pixel, and that will have an overall effect on our image. To, for example, make it fit a certain look or to make it fit our own personal style. Because essentially we can change that Canon blue into Sony blue or Nikon blue or whatever kind of blue you might want it to be. Okay, let's move on to the actual calibration tool and things will get a lot more clear. So like I said, you can find the calibration tool all the way at the bottom here. First off, there is a shadows tint slider that goes from green to magenta. And this one is pretty straightforward. Basically all it does is add green or magenta to the dark areas of your image. And you would use it for example, to correct any color cast that you might have in the shadow areas of your image. And of course, you can also use it for any creative coloring that you might want to do to your images. And then there is a red primary, green primary, and blue primary. And each of those has a hue slider and a saturation slider. And this is really where the power of the calibration tool is. So let's see if you can guess this right, but what do you think will happen when I move the red primary slider towards the right, so towards the orange? Logically, you would think that, well, red becomes orange and that's it. But that's not really the case. Let's see what happens. So if I move the red primary all the way towards orange, you can see that not only the red is changing, but also all the other colors are changing as well. So why did that happen? Well, by moving the red primary slider towards the orange, we've essentially told Lightroom that we want red to be orange, but not just the visible red, but the red at pixel level. And as you can remember, every color on the color wheel actually has a certain amount of red. And that's why all the other colors have changed as well. And of course, some colors have changed more dramatically than others due to the amount of red that they have in each pixel. And if I move the red primary towards magenta, you can see it has a similar effect only turning those red pixels into magenta. You can already tell by changing one primary color in the calibration tool that we have completely changed this entire image. So it's obvious that we're gonna be able to do some really amazing stuff with this when we apply it to some photos. But first, let's have a look at the other sliders. If I move the green primary towards the aqua, you can tell that the colors are becoming a lot more soft and pastel-like. And if I move it towards the yellow, you can tell that the colors become more saturated. And that's interesting because I actually haven't even touched a saturation slider. And again, this will become very important when we edit some real photos. If I move the blue primary towards the purple, you can tell that basically all the blue is being removed from the image. 
And if I move it towards the other side, you can tell we have a bigger range of blues complemented by these warm orange tones. And it actually brings the colors more together, making them more cohesive. Okay, so maybe now you're thinking, well, why wouldn't you just use the HSL tool to change the colors? And actually, let me know in the comments which tool you primarily use to change colors in your image. Is it the HSL tool, the color grading tool, the white balance? Let me know. So let's see what happens if I change the blue in the HSL tool. So I'm just gonna move the blue hue towards purple. And as you can tell, only the blue in the color wheel has changed. And here only the visible blue has turned purple. Whereas if I change the blue in the calibration tool and move it towards purple, you can tell that all the colors are changing. So not just the visible blue, but all these other colors have changed as well. And that's because the calibration tool affects every red, green, and blue value per pixel. Whereas adjusting the HSL sliders only affects that specific color that you are selecting. So you could say that the calibration tool has a much more global effect on the entire image, whereas the HSL tool only affects a very specific color. Okay, so let's put our knowledge into action and edit some photos. In this photo of these beautiful vineyards in Slovenia, you can tell we're dealing with a lot of greens and also these nice patches of light caused by the sun sticking through the clouds. However, the colors in this image look a little bit flat and dull and especially these patches of light could use a little bit more vibrance. And this image has no edits on it whatsoever. It's just a raw file straight out of the drone. Now, if you can remember from before, moving the green slider towards the yellow will actually create a bit more vibrance and saturation in those greens. And if I move my cursor around on these greens, I can tell by looking at the histogram that there's actually quite a bit of red in there as well. And I want a bit more of a vibrant, saturated and warm image. So I'm gonna move the red primary hue towards the oranges. And you can tell if I turn the calibration off and on, that only these two adjustments have actually introduced quite a lot of saturation and vibrance into the image without even touching any saturation sliders. So let's take it a little bit further and add some saturation into the greens and also add some saturation into the red primary. Let's turn the calibration tool off and on again and you can tell that the colors have become a lot more intense. And keep in mind, I still have to start with the rest of my edit. So right now I just have a much better base and more color to work with. Okay, so let me show you a pretty extreme example of what you can do with the calibration tool to really push a creative look to its limits. So this photo was taken in the middle of summer and you can tell everything is nice and green. And we're gonna completely change the look of this image and give it a bit more of a autumnal look, I guess you could say. And we're only gonna use the calibration tool. So first off, I'm just gonna move the shadow tint slider a little bit towards the green to get rid of this uh, magenta color cast that I'm seeing. Then I'm gonna move the red primary towards the orange, move the green primary towards the yellow, and now watch what happens if I move the blue primary towards the aqua. So that's a pretty extreme change in the colors, right? Now, of course, everything looks a little bit crazy and oversaturated. So I'm just gonna decrease the saturation in the blue primary, in the green primary, and in the red primary. And just like that, by moving a few sliders in the calibration tool, I ended up with a very uniquely stylized photo. Basically giving this summery green image a much more dark and autumnal look. And this might or might not be the direction you wanna take your edits, but I just wanted to show you how powerful the calibration tool is. So I don't know if you've noticed, but moving those hue sliders to their extremes actually brings the colors of the image more together. It kind of unifies the colors and makes the image a lot more uniform. And this is gonna be very important on the next photo that I'll show you. This photo of a friendly electronic sales guy in Japan has a lot of different colors, especially in the packaging. You can tell we're dealing with so many different colors and it just creates a bit of chaos in the photo. So if you would want to unify these colors and create a more visually pleasing image, it can be done in the calibration tool. Let me show you real quick how we can do that. So I'm just gonna move the red primary towards the orange the green primary towards the aqua, and then the blue primary towards the aqua as well. 
And if we look at the colors right now, and I'll zoom in so it becomes very clear, you can tell that all of these colors have become a lot more unified. So there's not so much chaos of color anymore. And overall, the image has just become a lot more visually pleasing. And this is also how you can create this very popular teal and orange look. And the reason it is popular is because it unifies those colors and then works with complementary colors. So the orange and the blue or the teal. So I'm sure that by now you'll agree that there is a lot of power packed in these seven sliders. And even though this is an amazing tool inside of Lightroom, you can only really get the most out of your photos if you know how to combine it with the rest that Lightroom has to offer. So make sure to watch this video next if you want to learn more about photo editing in Lightroom. And if you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe so you won't miss any future videos. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.